Hello and good day. This is the Bible Bard. A bard is a storyteller who recites traditional texts associated with a particular oral tradition, and I'm here to recite and to amplify what the literature of the Bible says about who is God and who are human beings. Here's the place we're at today. For people who disbelieve the supernatural, the healings the New Testament describes that Jesus performed are just mistaken conclusions of witnesses to events, or at worst, simply lies in a conspiracy to try and elevate Jesus politically and religiously. But let's look at what the text actually says. So let's begin with Mark chapter 1, verses 30, 31, and 40, 42, which uh, states, quote, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cured. In Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, the text reads, quote, Another time he, Jesus, went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored." Unquote. In Mark chapter 5, verses 27 through 29, the text uh, says, quote, When she heard about Jesus, she thought, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her sufferings. In Mark 7, Verse 32 and 35 and 8, 23, the, the text reads as follows, quote, Then some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took the man aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephrata, which means being opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Quote, unquote. In Mark 5, verse 22 through 26, uh, the text reads, quote, They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on them, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. These are just a few sample verses recording the healings of Jesus. Here's just a few things we should notice about these texts. In Mark 1, the two healings are described. In the healing of the lady with the fever, Jesus demonstrated a general power over disease. In the healing of the leper, Jesus healed someone with a communicable terminal disease by touching him, and his disease left him. In Mark 3, Jesus healed the disabled man with a withered arm. In Mark 5, Jesus demonstrated he has power over disease, about which, as a human being, he has no conscious knowledge. The woman with the issue of blood touches him from behind without his knowledge and is healed. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus heals a deaf mute whose deafness has a genetic origin. He does this again in Mark 8, healing the blind man. None of these genetic preconditions prevent Jesus from acting. Is it likely that the writer of Mark's gospel understood and selected instances in these categories of illness that cover everything from a general healing, the healing of a communicable terminal disease, healing without personal conscious knowledge of the sick person, and finally the healing 
of genetic diseases that are only understood as categories of illness in modern times, the text surprises us, providing categories of healing that span all illness types. It would be surprising if a first century person could make up such comprehensive fictions. But if Mark wrote down what he saw or was told by witnesses what Jesus did, it is interesting that the text has this kind of unmanufactured internal validity. Of course, the Bible bar doesn't like arguments from silence or other kinds of rationalization to prove a point. Instead, we argue from the text itself. These biblical descriptions of supernatural events, including healings, are what they are. The text states that Jesus' power over physical disease is provided as an accreditation from God his Son. In Acts 2, verse 22, Peter says to the Jews, quote, Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourself know, unquote. The idea that these miracles were intended to validate Jesus' relationship to God is important. In addition to healings, the gospel stories provide descriptions of Jesus having power over nature, power to transform or transmute the elements, even power to raise the dead whom sickness had already taken. This text, then, is providing further evidence about who Jesus is and what he has come to do. This is the way the Bible Bard works. Brief recitations, closely focused, no distractions, no rabbit trails. Send the Bible Bard any questions or remarks you care to offer to BibleBardUS at gmail.com. Glad to hear from you. Thanks in advance for following and sharing content from the Bible Bard community. Thanks for listening. The Bible Bard does not get information about Jesus from religion or some theology people have developed in the past. The Bible itself in its plain literary expressions in its text is the source of all revealed knowledge about God. We're archaeologists trying to get to that source. Once you know what the Bible says, because you have read it or heard its clear teaching for yourself, you are no longer dependent on religious ideology for your information. Get what the Bible says.